So we didn't upload on Monday due to the fact that the Derek Chauvin trial was still going on. I want to get all the information out as well as the verdict whenever it was presented to us. I thought the verdict was going to take actually a couple of days. However, in less than 11 hours, the jurors already came back with a guilty verdict. Those charges include second degree and unintentional murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. Now, I'm going to be as blunt as as possible and this may not be a favorable opinion to a lot of people but I don't think that Chauvin was guilty now I know that again may be a taboo statement but just hear me out I followed the case in its entirety listening to both the defense as well as the prosecution and learning about all the new evidence that I didn't know about before honestly in my opinion which again is my opinion the state failed to prove that the actions of Derek Chauvin alone led to George Floyd's death. I believe other things played an important role to his death. I believe that the drugs in the system, as well as the pre-existing health conditions that he did face, also played a key role into his death, not Chauvin's actions alone. But again, it doesn't matter what I think. I wasn't one of the jurors on this case. Now, in approximately eight weeks, we'll be getting the sentencing for Derek Chauvin, at which time the defense will be requesting an appeal. Now, this is due to the fact that this was, of course, a high-profile case, and the fact that the jurors that did step forward stated that they feared what would happen to them and the repercussions that would happen to their families if they didn't... De- deliver the guilty verdict. Now, during the trial, Chauvin did waive his right to having the jury decide his actual fate if they came back with a guilty verdict. Now, what this means that is that the judge will have the overall power to decide whether he is guilty or innocent. But for now, the case is closed. The verdict is a guilty verdict for all three charges, and he does await sentencing. But something happened after the case was closed. Something that hit all the newsstands, went throughout all social media. And that's the case of 16-year-old Micaiah Bryant. Now, this story flooded social media, like I said before. And everyone saw this video of yet another white cop shooting a black suspect. And, of course, this started a huge riot over there in Ohio. And questions were being asked, well, why would they shoot a young girl like this? She was innocent. Why couldn't they have just used a taser? Why couldn't they have done this? She was innocent. She did nothing wrong. Yada, yada, yada. But what these people fail to realize even now is that this cop, justified in his actions, by the way, saved the life of another black teen that was almost killed by Miss Bryant. And again, these people will not acknowledge that Miss Bryant was in the middle of an attempted murder. When the cop, again, justified his actions, stopped her from committing this crime. But yet, again, the narrative is cop shoots innocent person. And this is the narrative that they have been pushing during this trial. First was the incident involving Dante Wright. The 20-year-old that was, of course, killed by an officer after having outstanding warrants for his arrest. Now, again, all the people could think about was white cop shoots black victim. But this isn't the full story. We now know that, one, they didn't pull him over for having air fresheners in his car. They pulled him over, of course, for having expired tags, which really isn't a big deal. Of course, during COVID, there was a lot of things put in place to push that back. But what people don't fail to realize is whenever they ran his plates, they saw that he did have outstanding warrants for his arrest. And when cops tried making this arrest... He resisted. He went to his car and tried driving off. And at that time, he tried reaching for something. And the female officer accidentally, instead of using a taser, decided to fire off her weapon. Now, I do agree that this woman should face some type of charges because, again, this is negligence. This is an incident that shouldn't have happened. But, again, this accident could have also been avoided. If he wasn't resisting arrest or in the first place wasn't even committing a crime. But then another news story hit and kind of backlit this story. The shooting of 13-year-old Adam Toledo. Now this was a tragic story. Of course the whole narrative was, you know, a cop shoots 
yet again another black person. And in this case, oh, it's an unarmed black person. It was a little kid. How could you do this to a little kid? Yada, yada. But again, this isn't the full story. On March 29th, just before 3 p.m., um, an alert came out to officials in regards to gunshots being reported. Now, officials finally caught up to the people that were responsible for these gunshots. 21-year-old Ruben Rowan, who had Adam Toledo at his side, who also had a firearm. Now, both of them evaded police. Officer Stillman was able to catch up to Ruben, tackle him to the ground, and another officer was able to take over and make the arrest. Now, Officer Stillman decided to continue his pursuit of Mr. Toledo, and the chase began. Now, of course, the video, of course, has been surfacing, and it's been sh- shown all throughout news media about what happened. So, in the footage, you see that Officer Stillman is chasing uh, the 13-year-old and telling him, hey, stop running, stop running, put your weapon down, put your weapon down. Now, the chase does end whenever uh, Toledo does stop and then quickly turns toward the officer, at which time the officer reacts and fires a shot directly into Adam's chest. And unfortunately, the kid did die of his wound. Now, the officer did fail to realize that Toledo did actually drop the firearm. However, these situations can always turn quickly. Now, let's say he didn't drop the firearm. Let's say that Adam did turn quickly and the firearm was in his hand. Again, the cop is justified in this situation. Because there's too many times where traffic stops or any type of other stops end in an officer's death. Because you could be complying one moment and then completely change the next moment. And of course, people were outraged. How can you kill this kid? He was about to comply. He had no weapon in his hand. All these things are being asked. But the thing that's not being asked and the thing that really bothers me is, where are the parents? Why aren't the parents being held accountable? How was this kid even out at 3 a.m. with a 21-year-old with a firearm? Now, that doesn't make sense to me. What business does this little 13-year-old have holding a firearm? But the thing is, these are questions that no one's asking. Instead, it's blame the cop. Instead, it's let's not hold this kid accountable for doing something that was wrong. Now, we've gotten to a point where police can't even do their job anymore. And we've unfortunately seen instances where police are killed during these routine stops, during these times of high stress, or whenever they second-guess themselves. Police officers can't afford to second-guess themselves because it's either going to get themselves killed or someone else killed. And we don't take that into account. Us as civilians, we have no idea what it's like to be a police officer. Until you go through all that stuff and live that scenario, we don't understand it now after the fact of course we could question it well why didn't you do this why didn't you do that why'd you use this force why didn't you use this type of force we could ask those questions all day long but until you're in that situation where you have to make that split second decision you have no room to talk i apologize for the fly that's going in front of the camera for those of you that are listening on our listening network please ignore what i'm saying right now but anyway going back now All these cases have one thing in common. They are criminals doing criminal behavior. And again, the cops have to make a split second decision and make the right one in order to stop the threat from being more of a threat. In the case of Dante Wright, again, I do agree that this officer should definitely face some type of consequence. It is negligent to confuse your firearm, your main weapon, with a secondary taser weapon. Especially with so many years of doing the job to confuse it like that, yes, the officer should never practice law enforcement again. However, in the other two cases with Miss Bryant and unfortunately the 13 year old uh, Adam, the cops are justified in their actions. Because the cop in the case of Adam Toledo didn't know that he dropped the weapon, all he saw is this kid quickly turned toward the officer and he had to make that split second decision and it's one he's going to have to live with for the rest of his life in the case of miss bryant that officer was also justified in his actions he saved the life of that other teenage girl he saved her plain and simple you could argue oh 
oh, he should have shot her in the leg or he should have done a warning shot. No. First off, officers are trained to shoot for center mass, the biggest part of the body, center mass. As far as a warning shot, really, you want a stray bullet to possibly kill an innocent bystander? No. They're not trained in that way. He made a split-second decision and didn't have time to switch that weapon with the taser or anything like that. He knew that he had to stop this violent behavior right then and there. And the way you stop it is by ending the threat completely. And this is what law enforcement is. It may not always be pretty, but at the end of the day, their job is to protect other people from these bad people. Regardless if you like it or not. Regardless if you like how they did it. Are there bad cops out there? Sure. There's always a bad bunch. But we neglect to recognize these good cops for be doing the right thing. Doing the justified thing. And again, this is an opinion that not everyone shares with me, which is completely fine. Could things have gone the other way? Sure, but we'll never know. Could it have turned out different if all these people complied? Yes, 100%. If these people complied, didn't try fighting back, didn't try evading, they would be alive today, plain and simple. But the thing is, when you're trying to defund the cops, when you're trying to get rid of policing altogether... You're just creating more problems because eventually you're going to have to bring the police back. And I don't blame any officers that have put down the badge and don't want to do it anymore. I don't blame them. I wouldn't want to be an officer in this climate either. But the thing is you're opening the door for bad people to come in and abuse that power. And that's going to do more harm than good. It's just like in the military. You take anyone in here, you're going to get a bunch of shit bags that are going to be doing the wrong thing. What we need to do is support our police. We need to teach our kids to respect police again. We need to teach compliance. We need to teach how to de-escalate the situation, how to use non-lethal force. We need to put more money into policing and give incentives for police officers to do their job the correct way and get rid of the people that are doing it the wrong way. But I want to get y'all's opinions on this. I want to know what your thoughts on what the future of the police are. I also want to know if you really did find Derek Chauvin guilty or not. Again, all this is my opinion. These are my thoughts. You could look at the trial. You could look at the evidence that was presented by both the prosecution as well as the defense. But again, I do apologize for not posting on Monday. Um, all these stories happened out all at one time. I may be posting a lot more often on this channel. Just as soon as huge headlines come up, uh, I would love to cover all these stories more in detail, give you all the information. Um, but, you know, just do your own research. Come up with your own opinions. Don't go off of what everyone else says. Formulate your own thing, dude. Or girl, whatever you want to identify as nowadays. But other than that, um, that's all I have to say about this. If you're listening on our listening networks, please continue to listen to me. I know this went on a lot longer than it was supposed to. I appreciate you for listening. Um, go visit us on our YouTube channel. We're going to be posting the video format of this. You could see my pretty self. Uh, we also will be doing our coffee times yet again. I'm going to be joined by my co-host Captions hopefully soon. I'm just letting him adjust being back in California. He was you know, taking time to himself. I'm glad he's back. I'm going to be visiting him soon, so we might make a little video while I'm up there. So stay tuned for that. Other than that, um, I'll see you on the next one.